what's up on my Pyratus crew on my last fiberglass video I released on how to fix that little seam right there where it was all busted out right there but now we got to go to that side look how busted out it is Oop, right there viewfinder got messed up see that we're gonna patch that up today now if you like DIY videos that shows you how to work on your Jeep your car your motorcycle now fiberglass this could be a good channel for you to subscribe to. So hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss a single one of these cool videos. Alright, let's get on with some fiberglass work. So as you can see here, this is where the lower strut mount is that holds the back door up for the CJ top. Yeah, that door ain't going on quite yet, but we'll get to that later. So we gotta patch this thing up. So how are we gonna pull this off today? Now, this is one of those things you know you gotta analyze of what direction you want to go from. Now, you can just start packing fiberglass in here, all haphazardly like, and just make a major mess, or you can find a little bit of uh, organization to the chaos. You got two different ways to approach it. You can lay a flat piece right here and lay your glass up against it this way to make a good flat surface here, or you can get you some tape, roll around the back side right here, and pack your glass against the tape this way to fill in the void. So, really it comes down to which way is easier to do the body work. If you take and roll your tape around this way, flat's always easier to work with on body work than it is on the curves back here. Especially, I still got the top on the Jeep. Uh, I really should put my YJ hard top on, make it a lot easier to work with, but hey. So, what I'm thinking is, I'm going to take my tape, come back here, roll it this way, lay my glass in this way and fill in the void so it becomes flat because I can always get me a flat block you know two by four sandpaper and come up to here and work it down flat and smooth so first thing's got to be done I'm gonna get my little die grinder set up here this right here and we're we'll getting there to clean this up so I got some clean surfaces to work with now before you fire up that little sander and start sanding all stuff out safety glasses and get you a mask because you don't want to breathe that nasty stuff all right safety do it do it and there it is now basically what my goal was to back here on the back side i've got chamfered back a little bit a little bit of an angle like you see right here instead of grinding this off and leaving it at a hard 90 you want to take your glass and be able to feather it off on the edges to right here so it has also a good way of wrapping around your parent material here to get a good solid bond feathered it back right there i still kind of left that hole in place right there a little bit kind of i'll end up filling it in as i pack the glass in but here on the front side i can see where my radius is here and here that that'll kind of give me an idea of where my hole was originally but if i was to go ahead and fill it all in i can always use this over here as a guide that's nowhere to measure for my holes at not a big deal so basically you just want to make sure all your surfaces are flat because remember it had all those divots holes and stuff like that our goal is to when we put our fiberglass mat in let me find me a piece of paper here <clears throat> we put our fiberglass mat in you want flat surfaces but we'll pack the mat against the surfaces in here if you got a bunch of voids and holes and stuff like that that's what you're going to have with the material so you want to get to have some flat areas to lay that mat against to work it down well and now that i look at it, i'm probably going to go ahead and get my sanding pad my grinder pad and get inside here and go ahead and take that hole completely out right there therefore otherwise because i've got these sharp voids right here that's going to make the material while stand out so i'm going to get in here i'm going to smooth this right here back a little bit so the material has an easier way of laying in now it'll take me some three inch wide masking tape pull me off a little length here you want it you know, considerably a bit wider than your patch area Bring it, overlap it back. So you want it to come over like this right here by a little bit. Then roll it back and contour it to the curves in the back. And whenever you take, whenever you take and match your tape down, that tape will automatically make it same contour as what your top is. Your curve here, here. If you take whenever you mash it down and pull out like right here, it makes that contour back inside there perfect. And now what we're going to do is we'll get our wet our resin in our glass. We'll pack inside this right here and fill that void in full of glass. Now I've got this bigger piece of mat right here, and I'm tearing off little sections like this. 
And once you start to get past the point of tearing up the clean edge, it starts tearing really, really ragged like this right here. In a case like this, that's a good thing. You just take and pull. Get your finger pull right here. And pull. Pull out little sections like that. Now you see I've got some resin in the bottom right there. I'm just going to reuse my container. This resin right here is already hardened from where I did that job on the other side. And I was testing some uh, kick times too on some of this catalyst out here. Catalyst technically. So it's porcelain resin. Don't need a lot. Don't want a lot yet. Because we're just working small patches. You don't want a whole lot of resin and end up wasting it. Okay, so... You can see on the lower part right here, oops, where'd the camera go? Okay, you can see on the lower part right there about how much uh, resin I got. And you, there's about how big a diameter my uh, pipe um, container is, so you know about what I'm dealing with. Now, this is the catalyst that comes with the kit. Now, if you guys watched my last video, I, I mentioned about how slow this stuff cures out. I want it to cure a little faster, but I'm going to use the same resin, but I'm going to use my catalyst because I get this stuff straight from my supplier in Nashville. I know this stuff's a beast. So that'll tell me the difference between this catalyst that comes with that, which is, uh, looks to be a slow cure, and I know this is the fast cure. It will take a lot less of this right here than it does the other stuff. So I'm going to take, put me a little dollop in here, and we're talking, just watch how I pour it. I mean, we're talking just a little bit. And if that other catalyst that comes with that kit, <clears throat> if it's what I think it is, this will answer my questions, because I'm using the fast kick, fast cure catalyst here. My fancy mixing stick here that I got up out of the yard. Mix it up real good. Now only do this if your catalyst, you know, if you're using a reusing a container, if your container has kicked, um, kicked or hardened material on the bottom of it. If that material down here is still gelling, don't use it because then you got two different um, mixes of um, catalyst going, and it gets a bit unpredictable as to how fast it'll cure out. Okay, we're on our patch place now. I've got me a rag hanging down here on the bottom. As you guys see right there, because I'm guaranteeing this is going to get messy. Get my rag up here so I don't get it all over the tub. There we go. All right. First of all, you're going to get your, just a one inch chip brush. Cheap, cheap chip brush. Go to Harbor Freight, or even Lowe's has these. These are just cheap brushes. You don't want nothing expensive. Because odds are you, if this stuff wants to gel up while you're working on it, you're just going to trash the brush anyway. Get everything out good and wet out. Get us a little bit of material. Let's see. Put your material like that and just pack it up inside there. You can take your hand and support the back of the tape if you want to because you, what you want is taking your brush and packing that fiberglass at the back in those corners. Just a little more. I'm going to turn. This one right here has a straight edge on it on the material, so I'm going to bring it back toward the outside of the tape and push the, the frayed stuff into the inside because you want the frayed stuff back here where the corners are where those little tight areas because it's easier to pack that frayed stuff into those tight areas than it is the uh, straight stuff get down here give it a little more resin pack it in wet this out of the tape take your hand support the back side of the tape and wet that material out pack that material up in those corners very well And yeah, see, I'm going to, just for a moment, show you guys. You see right there where I've got, you can see the, how blue the tape is because I've got that fiberglass saturated really well. 
and I'm taking my brush and tapping it way up inside those corners like that, cramming those uh, frayed edges of the glass deep into the corners. some more glass in give me a little bit more resin on the brush and again I've got a straight edge on this one right here so I'm gonna fold it out put it out of here on the uh, tape tuck it up here a little bit saturate that material really really well you can't have it too wet but you can have it too dry if you see white of the fiberglass fibers, it's too dry. So give me so much really good freight stuff. Now I'm going to cram it back in this front side right here where the, the, the top is. And don't worry about this right here hanging out. We'll take and you can pack that stuff up inside here like this right here. Fill that hole up. But when you're packing it in, that fibers are wanting to bend. You got to make sure you have plenty of rest and to make sure it bends like it should. Basically, it's just like cramming a spitball up inside there. Sip your spitball is fiberglass and resin. And you're taking the brush, yeah, you're cramming it back in the corners and stuff, but also look for like white spots. Those white spots is air. I wish I could show you guys this while I'm doing it, but uh, yeah. This stuff puts you on a time limit to where you got to hustle. If uh, this, this, uh, Okay, now we're going to take this frayed piece right here. I'm going to cram it down toward the bottom. Take the pack it in. Now I'm a little thin on glass up here on this top edge, so I'm going to get me some more. And I'm going to intentionally leave this down here dry a little bit, because I'm going to come back, I'll grab the camera in a moment and show you guys what it looks like if you don't have enough resin in there. But I want to cram this up on the top of this first. Give me a little more juice. Pack that baby up in here. Okay, before I make that down there wet like it should be, uh, let's see which hand I don't have glass on. This stuff gets messy. All right, uh, do it this way. I'll just grab the stand. You can see right down in the lower part, right down inside there. You see the little, like little white spots and stuff. Wherever you see white spots, that's air, and that's where you need to take your brush or more resin and pack that resin inside there to eliminate any of those white spots you see back inside those crevices. Get rid of the air. The air is weakness. Support your tape so you don't push it off, but you also want to make sure you push that material up in between the tape and the top so you got as little voids as possible. You're going to have a little bit, so expect that. But as long as you got more surface, you got bonded fiberglass to top to the material here. The more you got bonded to it, more contact surface, the stronger your stronger it's going to be. The rest of it, you can fill it in with more uh, fiberglass material. Or depending on how, how small the void is, you can come in with body filler or whatever if you want to make it really super pretty. Put a little material in on the front side. And I guess you kind of pretty much get the gist of it. We're just doing nothing but packing this mat inside there to fill up that big old hole. Give me a little more juice on my brush. Got to juice it up. If you notice the way I folded that, that's really going to play against me if I ain't careful. But the trick's going to be is lots and lots and lots of resin. Because remember, well I said in the last video, what I'm going to say in this one, the resin by itself is weak. The glass by itself, as you've seen, is weak because I'm tearing it apart with my fingers. But it's the combination of the resin and the fiberglass is where you get your strength from.
Yeah, the, the glass, you see me tearing the fibers apart. That's nothing. And the resin by itself is actually brittle, very brittle. But you combine the two together and you got the strength. I need more juice. So instead of boring you guys to death watching me do this right here, I'm just going to continue packing this right here in. And I'll be back with you in just a bit. But you get the point. Just pack that glass in. Okay, I've packed a little bit more in there. And I just want to get the brush out. Show you guys the motion I use with the brush. Take your brush, because all this outside edge right here where it's going to the flat surface here, I'm going to tamp it down. You just take the end of your brush. No matter where you're working, either inside here, outside edges, whatever, you just take an indie brush and just do it like this. And see why I've got the rag down here? Because i got it dripping. Looky, it's messy. And those of you who have never worked with fiberglass, just a heads up, this stuff flat out stinks. So if you're inside your garage or something like that, have good ventilation. This stuff stinks. I mean, like seriously stinks. Let's see, I'm taking my hand here and again supporting the tape as I take the brush, push against it to pack that glass, get the air out of it, and weigh it down real well. And right there where that hole was, that recessed area, I'm going to end up re having to redo it. It just depends what kind of bolts I put in. But I'll take the brush, tamp it up in there, it gets rid of all that air. Air is obviously voids, and voids is weakness. To get rid of as much as possible don't beat yourself up trying to get take care of every little tiny spot of air because you drive yourself crazy there is a time to where i'll show you guys where you know absolute all removal of air is important but if you got just a few little small tiny spots of voids here and there it's not the end of the world Check my tape for sure. I'm not pushing out too far. But if it does put, by the time you got this right full of glass, and if it does bubble out a little bit, you can just flat block it from back here if you're that picky, and flat block it from back here to, you know, get your shape back. Okay. Check my resin. See that resin moving in there? Your camera's not gonna pick it up too well, but it's got a little bit of a gel texture to it which answers my question from my last video. You guys need to go back and check it because um, I pointed out some issues I had last time using the kit that I have, the resin, the fiberglass that all comes with. Now I'll, I'll get, as soon as I get this slimy mess right here taken care of, I'll show you more, life, more about it. But the catalyst that comes with that kit is a slow cure. And we're talking, it took hours for the glass to cure and I'm just not used to that I'm used to using the um, industrial style fiberglass that cures within minutes so I was almost to the point thinking that that uh, kit was bad you come to find out what it's just a super slow cure and for newbies you know for the people who never dealt with glass before that super slow cure is actually a good thing it gives you time to work with it instead of going oh crap now what do I do I don't wasted a bunch of glass because it cured on me Plus more, and well, the same old gig. Just keep packing that resin in. Resin and glass, resin and glass, over and over and over. What you could also do is allow this part right here to cure because you've got this back here encased in. Allow this right here to harden and cure and trim it out. Yeah, the resin's starting to gel on me. So yeah, that totally answers my question. So I'm gonna keep working with this right here until my resin sets up on me. Until I get to where I can't work with it no more, then I'm gonna quit, let this cure out, then I'm gonna come trim that out and we'll fill some more in later. It's looking pretty. And you see, this is time consuming. So just imagine that spot's above me up there that we gotta work on. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Uh, what's my resin doing? Yeah, I think I better tap out because let me show you what my resin's doing right here see it see that gel uh where's my camera at there it is turn it turn there it is see that gel right there that means that's that's curing it's kicking in our language in fiberglass world it's kicking the gel the, the resin's kicking so when it gets gelled like that you're wasting your time trying to work with it because you can't get it to pack in there correctly you know to wet out the material so whenever you see this right here 
you're done. It's time for a new batch of resin or just chill out until this cures and trim it, which is what I'm going to do. Since that's gelling, I'm going to go ahead and let this cure out. I'm probably going to hit it with a heat gun make it go a little faster. You take a, a good hot heat gun and hit that. Don't just warm it. Just warm it. Don't get it hot because what can happen if you hit it too much with a heat gun, you're going to make that resin start to boil. And if it boils, you're going to create boys and bubbles inside there. So you just want to hit it with a little bit of heat if you want to. You don't have to. It'll make it cure a little bit faster. So, with that being said, I'll be back with you guys in a little bit. Your bubble. Yeah. Okay, since I zoomed back, I'm going to let this cure. Trim it out. Be back with you in a bit. Now here's the heat gun I use. It ain't nothing special. I mean, it's some cheap who whatever knockoff it's the same thing if you was to buy a milwaukee a black and decker or whatever it has two speed uh two uh, settings high and low and that's it uh if you really want to get nerdy about it right there it says it's a uh, 1500 watt so all that i'm going to do is simply put it on low See, and just to give you guys an idea how far back I am, where my hand is right here, I'm about a hand, about half a thumb or so, back from it. And I just pass over it a little bit, with it on low, and just slowly, don't sit like this on it, it's a, it's a no-no. Pass over it, I'm off of it. Pass over it, off of it. If you want to, you can get on the back side of the tape here a little bit. Again, I'm about seven inches or so off of it, so I don't get too hot. About seven, eight inches off of it. Keep it moving, don't get it too hot. I, I don't know how to teach you guys to say, okay, it's 75 degrees out here, use this kind of, uh, use this many drops of catalyst and stuff like that. Look on your jug. This thing, this jug right here has its manufacturer's, manufacturer's recommendations of how much your ratio is between catalyst and resins. Just start with that. Because again, that's all based off of the manufacturer's chemical formulation, okay? Start with that. If it kicks too fast for you, use less catalyst. If it kicks too slow for you, use more catalyst. And I mean, that's really, it's one of those things you got to do a trial and error with to figure out what ratios you need to use. Like I said, slow acting, fast acting, night and day difference. You guys seen earlier when I mixed that batch up for this right here, I used the fast acting catalyst. You see, I, I might have used in that little bit of resin, I might have poured in a half a teaspoon and I had about a 30 minute window to get that stuff packed in. Now, if I'd use a slow acting, that would have been hours, okay? That's how much dramatic difference there is between a fast acting and slow acting. So, I hope all my rambling taught you guys something, because I don't, that's one of those things about fiberglass that's really hard to teach unless you're actually doing it, okay? Sweet. All right, so next time you see my mug, we'll be filling this thing right here in some more and do some more cleanup work on it. Sweet. Because we're not doing anything else tonight. It's getting dark. I'm hungry. So here we are a week later. I finally get time to work on this thing. Because of errands I had to run all week. Work. I just didn't get time to work on this, place, on this uh, patch place to shoot any more videos. So finally I get a Saturday. And guess what? Look at my top. Mm -hmm. See the water spots? It's raining. Luck has it. But it's not a direct hard rain. It's just kind of a light mist right now, so I can tough this out. But here's the kicker. Whenever you work with fiberglass resins, and the catalyst in particular, the catalyst does not like water. Water will kill catalyst dead, and it, the uh, resins will not kick off or harden. It's a light rain right now, and I'm going to use my industrial style catalyst, the strong stuff, as, which kicks quite a bit faster, hardens faster. Also, being that it's not a direct hit, it's not... There's going to be very few minimal raindrops hit it. Now, Rust Bucket, I've got a project on it that I want to do. I cannot, I definitely can't do that because it's going to be a direct rainfall on top of it. It'll kill the catalyst dead and, well, I ain't wasting all that time and money for nothing. 
So let's get back on this piece right here before uh, hopefully the bottom won't fall out. Well, I looked at the radar, it shouldn't. But let's find out. Get to work. Okay, so I've got my camera set up and it's out of the rain. What we're going to do, we're going to take a little grinder heads right here. And being that we, this has been a week since I've started on this, and I still, still got to finish patching that hole in, I'm going to take my little grinder head right here. You got to get inside here like this right here. And like, like inside here like this. You want to roughen it up. Therefore, it gives the next layers of resins and fiberglass something to bond to. It, because I used a brush to pack this in. You get a brush and do the simulation again. Because I used a brush doing like this right here to pack it in. It's not super smooth. So odds are you can just start with uh, new layers of uh, resin and material on top of it. You'll be okay. But if I was to use a roller, a fiberglass roller, which we'll get into that in later videos, I would definitely have to rough it up some to give it a good physical bite to for the resins and glass. So I'm going to dress this up a little bit with my da -da, this, and we'll get back to patching it up some more. And due to rain, so I can't, I'm going to take turn the camera off, set it back out of the way. It's out of the rain right now, but I, I got a little bit of mist on the lens, and I don't want this dust to crap all over it. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I took my little grinder pad and grinder straight here flush, kind of flush it out right through here. And I can see right here you got a little bit of air bubbles going on. So what you want to do is find out how deep is this running. And see how those pop out like that? I'm wearing my safety glasses, people. Because that stuff will pop right in your eyes and it hurts. So what you want to do is get in here and cut out any air you got. Push that knife the other way because it makes me nervous. Come on, Rain, hold out for me. Cut that back a little bit right here. All right, so we got all that right there. I notched that out. We're gonna lay some fiberglass over into that. And here, back right there a little bit more. I gotta pack more glass in here anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay it over that right there, fill that in with glass. So now I'm gonna take my little sanding head again. Get inside here, roughen that up for the fiberglass to have something to bite to. Alright, so I'll move the camera out of the way because this stuff is dusty. Be sure you wear uh, a mask. Don't breathe this stuff. It's really rough on the lungs. Okay. A little bit of resin, not much. Because I don't need a lot for this patch. Remember, just mix up what you need. Too much and you're going to waste. Now, that resin come with a kit that I mentioned before, but I'm going to use my catalyst. This is the hot, hot, uh, now this resin come with a kit that I mentioned to you guys before, but I'm going to use my catalyst. This is high dollar, super potent stuff. And it takes very little of this catalyst right here, because this stuff right here ain't no joke. That right there could be pushing my luck, but it's kind of... There's a lot of moisture out here, obviously, from the rain. So I'm going to take this paintbrush right here. has hardened from when we was doing this before. So I'm just going to use it for a stir stick. And if I didn't mention it before earlier in the video, don't get this stuff in your eyes. Please, it hurts. All right, let's get back on the patch spot. Here we go. Now, I'm set my catalyst right here. Uh, resin's right there in front of me. I'm kind of leaning over the camera doing these people because it's raining on me. All right, let's dab a little bit of resin inside there. Fiberglass mat. Tear off little sections. Put it in place. right there and pack it in there now remember those little divot places right here we cut out take your brush pack into those little places there so you fill that in make it bond and don't worry about all this fuzz hanging out here we'll take care of that with the, when we sand it or grind it whatever method you decide to use 
get pack into those places here. Now the more you generously those places out there where we had to cut out because of the air, the more generously you grind them out, the better the glass lays in. And notice how I laid that mat up here. I kind of tilted it upward a little bit so I can get a little bit of it up here to where that pass place is, the air hole. So you see what I'm doing. I'm going to get the camera out of the way because I've got water. I've got one hand over top of the camera keeping water hitting it. And pack it in with this side right here. And every now and then I have to uncover the camera to get some more material. So you see what I'm doing. So I'm going to finish packing this in. I'll be back with you guys in just a little bit. Oh, also look. I got me a rag down here below to keep the drips from getting all over the tub because this gets messy. All right, I want to finish filling this right here and be back with you in a bit. Okay, I just want to show you guys, look, point something out. I still keep building up on this back edge right here. I've cut some little thin strips that are nice, clean cut. Therefore, I can pack them up inside that groove right there to get it built up and filled in to bring that center section outward this way to start flushing it out. Yeah, I know it's white right there. It's what it, Whenever you see white like that, it means there's air inside there. So what you want to do is, once you get a little bit packed in there, get you some resin, saturate it real well. And that's all you got to do, just keep building that center section up and using... Oh, come on, get out of there. See, another little thin strip, putting it right in the middle right there. So you don't keep building up on the side out here, because that's kind of wasting resin and creating work. I've got my head hanging right over top of the camera. Keeping water off of it, just to show you guys this. Dip me a little more resin, soak that baby down. Anyway, I know this part right here is boring, but you got the point. So I'm gonna go back to packing this stuff in. Okay, kicking the camera back on now because I've got a, a quite a bit of the field work done already. Let me move this right here back a little bit. You see that one section I'm putting in right there? What I've done, as I put in the pieces, you remember I had a little narrow, narrow, skinny pieces? I kept packing them in the middle, packing them in the middle, layering it, bringing it outward. As Therefore, I got that little crevice inside there, that valley, filled up. As I brought them out, a couple of pieces a little wider each time, so I properly filled in that valley, that groove. So now my outer caps right here are about the width of the top of that groove. And I'm really, see I got some low spots right there. Right there's low. Here's high, which is okay. High is good. High you can grind down low. And it depends how picky you want to be. You know by the time I kick the camera back on that the rain will kick in again. Uh, it cut me another small piece of material. Now I'm going to take me a piece, put it right up in here, start building up that low spot. Put it right up in here. Getting about time for I need to start washing my resin. Because I use an industrial catalyst and that stuff right there kicks a lot faster than the catalyst that comes with that kit. Now that kit is a good kit, even though I think I said it on my first video, and I'm gonna put all this together in one big playlist so you guys can watch the each repairing series and my comments about different situations with inside doing fiberglass repair like right now it's about low 70s out here right now but rain low 70s is a good temperature to work with glass because it doesn't make it kick crazy fast but all this moisture the air from the rain will retard or slow down the curing process of the glass and Again, it's like I said one of, my, one of my past videos, teaching you guys how to do the catalyst timing is going to be the hard part. That's the reason it's really important you guys watch all these videos. I mean, there's fiberglass videos on YouTube that says, hey, you do it this way and you do it that way. People, I'm here to tell you the straight up truth. It's not cut and dry simple. It isn't. One of my commenters on one of my uh, videos on fiberglass said he had his working with it, they said it kicked off so quick that he didn't have time to do anything. Well, when it happens, pull back on your catalyst a little bit, and it'll slow down the curing process. But if it's kicking ridiculously slow for you, or if it's kicking slower than you want to deal with, 
turned up the catalyst a little bit, and I mean a little bit. I'm not talking, okay, I'm going to throw another teaspoon. A teaspoon, I didn't even put a teaspoon in that. We're talking minuscule, like eyedropper additions. And it's okay if you're going to build it up a little bit high to be sure you got no low spots. But again, it's one of those things how picky you want to be with it. I think I'm adding my last piece of glass here for two different reasons. One, I've got it built up kind of high. And for two, I'm going to show you just a minute that my catalyst, my resin, is starting to gel. And I can see there's a little bit of air underneath there. This isn't... There's times that you want to be driving yourself nuts by chasing down air pockets. And times it's not as critical. This is one of those that... If you can get it all out, great. But if you don't drive yourself nuts. I'll show you, as if you pay attention to these and watch all my video videos for this fiberglass series I'm doing, you'll see when I want you to be picky with air or when not to be picky with air. Now I'm laying my brush flat like this because now what I'm doing like I share is putting divots and stuff inside the material of the surface. Now I lay my brush flat against like I show here, it kind of dresses it out a little bit. See how it's kind of flattening it? Gotta make it pretty. Well, it's not really pretty because when it comes down to it, I'm gonna take my grinder, flush all that back out, flush it out with this. Okay, look at my resins. Look at it. See, it's getting clumpy. That's letting you know that you're about the end of the working time with that mix. It's starting to gel up on me now. And the way I fired it, the fired it means is a slang, a slang term that Dad and I use. And everybody I've ever been around the world will fire glass. When you fire it up, you're putting your catalyst in your resin, how hot you want to fire it. And that little bit of resin I had in there probably dropped a half a teaspoon of uh, catalyst in it. All right, so that's built up above that. It's actually above all that patchwork. So I'm going to let this cure out, and we'll dress it out, and be back in a bit. So it starts raining again. I climb up in the back of my Jeep while it cures out so I can talk to y'all a second. Now, like I said, I'm working in the rain. As much as I want to fuss about having to get out here and work in the rain because <clears throat> when I finally get time to do something, guess what? It rains. But this is one of those times where it, actually, it can lead to an advantage for me teaching you guys stuff. Your material, this is fiberglass mat as I mentioned before. Any place that you get a raindrop on that mat the catalyst will fall dead, it will not harden. So you'll have uncured spots of material, of resin, anywhere water spots hits its mat. So I kept it tucked up inside the top here so it never got wet. Uh, whenever you're mixing up your resins and you put the catalyst in, keep the raindrops out of it. Obviously, because it's gonna, water and catalyst do not mix. That is one of the few things that'll kill the catalyst dead and it doesn't cure out, it doesn't harden. Um, now that my patch place over here has started to gel out, started to cure, it's okay. Because on the outer side of it, when it starts curing out and harden, it becomes, um, I ain't going to say impervious to water, I'm not going to say whatever. But what I am going to say is that once the curing process starts and starts kicking in strong, water is a lot less susceptible to it. Now, don't, you can't submerge it, you can't have it you know, directly getting hit on the rain. But where my top is and where it's angled, I'm getting such minimal water touching, it's not going to hurt anything. Versus rust bucket, I got something I want to show you guys, a really cool trick. If you want to build your own panels, that I couldn't do it right now because it's going to be laying flat horizontal. Rain will be hitting directly on top of it. And if it did cure, what I would have is white spots all in the material where the raindrops, wherever the raindrop hit it, it would kill the catalyst and it's prevented from hardening. So I would have a um, nice fiberglass texture, whatever, but white spots where the catalyst was killed dead from the water. So as much as I want to fuss about when I finally get time to do something, the rain kicks in, this actually was a great tutorial situation for you guys, for, you have, for the people who have to work outside. Now I've got all my electrical, I've got you know, the LED lighting, I've got wiring, I've got my breaker boxes and all my big cabling to tap into my uh, service panel out here in my shop to build my carport into a shop that's for nothing but recording studio for doing all my uh, videos for the Jeeps or tutorials, whatever the case may be. That's what I'm going to turn my carport into. 
because attached to my carport, which you see the wall right here, that is where I do most of my um, merchandising work at. Merchandising will be coming soon. That um, is where my computer is, where I do a lot of my editing. So that's pretty much my whole office area on, on this side of that wall right there. So I'm going to turn this into my recording studio, which you see here. Therefore, all this whole here in the house becomes just for YouTube, for you guys. Sweet. All right. So, anyway, I thought I'd just take this moment to talk about how water treats uh, fiberglass and catalysts and stuff. So, I want this stuff cure out. We're going to sand it off and see what it looks like. Okay, patience is my best virtue. So, I threw a heat gun on it for a little bit, made it cure out a little faster. And you see right here, it's pretty well set. It's still kind of soft in places. But I'm going to try something. Either one or two things is going to happen. Either it's going to work like I wanted to or I'm going to make a mess. We're about to find out which. Hooking up my airline to my little die grinder. As you see here. And I got... It's not a really coarse... Probably about 120 head on it. 120 grip. Put the peepers in the mask on. Got protective mask, protective lungs. Okay, here's the deal though. Whenever you're grinding this, this is above the surface of this, okay? This is higher than this, which means we're going to grind it down flat. Now, you got all this crazy junk right here sticking out here where I lapped it over. That's okay. Some people want to get in here and do all this crazy. Don't, don't, don't. Don't waste your time. Because as you grind this right here flush, you're going to cut this part out anyway. So it's, when you turn your header, your uh, grinding pad like this, you're going to be risking blowing all that junk back on you. You don't want that. This stuff itches. So just simply... Work with it, work with it, keep working through here, and you'll shave that stuff right off, and you just keep working to get it smoothed out. So, you're not going to be able to hear me over this, so I'm going to show you guys for a moment how that comes off there, and yeah, well, you'll see. See right here's my edge already starting to show up. See? Now it's feathered all the way out here. It's right on that edge where I just simply kept flushing it until it finally just trimmed itself off. Okay, I need to do a little bit of dress up work back here just to clean up the surfaces and stuff, but past that, it's pretty well ready to go. Got it all cured out, and I've got a wet spot on my rag here. Since it's secured out, water's not a big deal to it anymore, which helps us see what's going on. Remember those little places we ground back to, uh, that were all divvied out? Right there they are, all filled in. And like I said, I gotta get back here and dress this up a little bit where I got some strays where I took the brush packed in back here. Um, but there it is, all patched up. 
Now, I'm not going to get into the whole body work process of you no know, body fillers stuff like that because I've still got a lot of work I'm going to do this top, so I'm not worried about body work at this point. I am going to go ahead and I got a little bit of resin runoff down here, clean that up, and probably just throw a little bit of layer of paint over top of it just to protect it. Because one thing about fiberglass, it does not like UV. UV means like the sun rays and stuff like that. Sun rays beating down on raw fiberglass will eventually make the glass dry out and start becoming a little phrase of hair sticking out of it. So you at least want to take some rattle can spray paint, some I can't put over top of it to protect it. I'm not going to drill my holes because that's where the strut that holds the back door up, this is where it mounts at. This side right here was missing. This side had one, but uh, I'm not going to reuse them. So I'm just gonna make something else when it comes time to put the door on. So I'm not gonna worry about drilling my holes right now, which is gonna give you guys an excuse to be sure you subscribe to this series, subscribe to my channel and watch this series because whenever I start putting the top together, put the door in, because you see I gotta fix them still. When I put the back door and stuff in, you're gonna see how I'm gonna drill my holes, fabricate my mouths and stuff like that. So you really wanna subscribe so you don't miss a bit of these videos. There you go. As you see, working with fiberglass is not hard. It's just one of those things you really got to get your hands dirty with to get the feel for how it works. Fast curing catalyst, slow curing catalyst. Get the slow curing catalyst first so you get used to how to work with it, how to pack the glass in. Because slow curing catalyst, obviously by the slow cure, gives you a lot more time to work versus a fast curing. If you fire too hot, it's going to be over with and you, know, you may get my window the way i normally fire stuff i get about 20 to 30 minutes of working time the way i fire my catalyst now i use a fast curing catalyst the industrial style catalyst uh slow curing catalyst can take up to several hours to cure out now the kit that i've introduced to you guys here's the uh, here's the resin right here it's a kit that i got on amazon i've been using that resin right there this whole time i haven't used my industrial resins or anything like that but I have been using my catalyst here because this stuff right here ain't no joke. This right here is what uh, Gibson House Bowls, uh, see I worked for Gibson for several years, uh, Harbor Master, uh, I was actually one of Gibson's R&D people that designed their molds. So that's the stuff I've always been used to working with. This stuff ain't no joke. It's a fast cure catalyst, it's a crazy fast cure catalyst. Uh, but that's what I'm used to working with. So the kit that I'm going to link up, you guys check it out. It's a slow cure catalyst. And once you get used to working with fiberglass, uh, see if you can find the fast cure. And I think the kits the guy like Walmart, Auto Parts Store, place like that, you get the little resin cans. I'll link it up so you guys can check it out. Uh, the little resin cans, I believe it comes with a fast cure catalyst. But again, use a little, pay attention to how much of the ratio it says on the can. And if you're still not sure, back it off just a tiny little bit. And I say a little bit, we're not talking about backing it off by half a teaspoon or a teaspoon or something like that. No, if you use that much for this little bit of resin, you're overfired anyway. Uh, we're talking eye droppers. I mean, drop, 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 drop. We're talking that much difference. It makes a world of difference. Now, when you're firing big, huge batches, there's been times my dad and I were working on houseboats and such that we'll fire up you know, close to, you know, quart half a gallon at a time but you can guarantee that we're laying a bunch of material at one time and we have it's like clockwork watching this run we know each other's step i mean because we've done it for so many years so get used to how fast the curing uh, process of the catalyst that's the number one thing with working with fiberglass if it over, if it kicks off on you too quick walk away, let it cure out, come back, sand it flat, and then come back and start adding more material to it. That's the one thing about it. If it does kick off and it cures out and it hardens on you, it's not a big deal. You can always come back and patch it back up. Not a big deal, okay? So, I don't know, get you some materials, find you some fiberglass stuff to play with, and I'm gonna have some really cool products for you. One of the videos coming up probably the next week, week after next, is gonna be on Rust Bucket. And I'm going to show you guys how to make your own fiberglass panel out of something. I'm not even going to tell you the material music because I'm not using fiber. I will use matte, fiberglass matte, that stuff I've been showing you here. I will use some of this, but it won't be the first material I use. Fiberglass uh, catalyst resin, yes, obviously got to have that. But the very first material, I'm not going to tell you because something you just got to check out for yourself. So be sure to subscribe to these uh, videos. Subscribe to my channel, obviously. 
and give me a thumbs up if you like in these videos give us comments down below what you think about fiberglass so far people i've got some really cool tricks lined up for you guys more than just patch repairs we're talking speaker boxes all kinds of stuff you can do with fiberglass i love this stuff you can get so creative with it so you got to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of these cool videos all right all right everyone appreciate you hanging out share these videos share them to your facebook your twitter your reddit whatever type of social media you use share them out because you're spreading these videos out you're spreading knowledge and you're helping people i'll make the videos you spread them share them out all right everyone appreciate you hanging out peace out lady y'all